Hello everyone, and welcome back to RBL Talk. On this week's show, we have some club news, we recap the Frankfurt game, and we take a look ahead to our next match against Bayer Leverkusen in the Bundesliga. And I'm also looking for a Union Berlin English-speaking fan or supporter to interview. So if you know someone, get them to contact the podcast. RB Leipzig has officially announced the extension of the contract with their defender, Lucas Klosterman. The new agreement for the 27-year-old centre-back is now valid until June 2028. Klosterman has been representing the team from Leipzig since 2014, following his transfer from Bochum. The defender came to the Bulls at a modest fee of 1 million euros. In total, the German defender has played 278 matches, scoring 14 goals in the current season He has participated in 21 matches across all competitions and scored one goal. I, for one, am very happy about this acquisition. I didn't know if he was going to be signing on or being moved on, as he was very stalling in his contract talks. RB Leipzig sporting director Ruben Schroeder has explained the struggles of Fabio Cavallio. The Liverpool attacker spent six months with RBL before leaving and starting a new loan at Hull City last week. He realised, okay, there's a competitor here and I have to do more. And we noticed that he didn't want to face the competition, Schroeder told reporters in Germany. We asked ourselves the question, do we feel more comfortable with the man or are we clear and straight and say, listen, if you don't want to go with us, then we'll end the loan. You shouldn't be afraid to break it off. Elif Elmas has joined RB Leipzig from Napoli on 1st January 2024. The 24-year-old has signed a four and a half year contract until June 2028 and will wear the number six shirt for RBL. And a quick note, Timo Werner played his first game on loan at Tottenham. He played 80 minutes and got himself an assist. Timo is at Tottenham until the end of the season and there is a 17 million euro option to buy for Tottenham if they wish to activate that. They are also paying his full wages while at Spurs. You can be a part of the show too with the RBL Talk segment. You can even come on the show as a special guest. The way you do this is by interacting with us on Spotify, social media, such as Twitter. Check out the homepage or email in at show at rbltalk.com. More information in detail, how to get involved with the show, for free, in the show notes. On to recapping the Frankfurt game. What we did right. Recovery. We managed to get the ball back quickly when we were out of possession. Shooting isn't a problem with a total of 31 shots. And great discipline, we had no bookings, which is good to see. Especially for Louis Appenda, Zavi, and Mohamed Samikin, who have picked up four yellow cards in the Bundesliga this season and will receive a one-match ban if they are booked again. What we did wrong. Now, I'm not trying to single out specific players here. I'm only just singling out the plays in the game. Samikin could have prevented the goal. All he had to do was clear the ball as it went across him or mark the space past the ball. For the run in behind, but he didn't either. I don't know if he didn't think the pass was weighted enough and it would get past him, or if he thought that he'd get to the ball, because it didn't look like he knew that the Frankfurt winger was behind him. Gotzer was allowed to dictate the play. It looked like we stood off him a little bit and didn't have anyone marking him. And we were just an accurate in front of goal. It wasn't our day for some of the good chances we had. I mean, I could go on. Penta took an extra touch in the 37-minute mark. Simikin missed a couple of headers. But all in all, we were the better team for a majority of the game. We just didn't take our chances. Three things we learned via Frankfurt. Olmar would be back with his best with time. He looked a little rusty, but progressed well as the game went on. Boy, hasn't it been great to see Danny Olmo back in the squad after that shoulder injury. Defensive issues still persist, even after 
the winter camp at La Manga in Spain. I'm not too sure what's happening these days. I really think we need Willie Orban back, as we're leaking goals that just shouldn't be happening, and our concentration seems off. And Frankfurt win their first ever game at the Red Bull Arena. Unfortunately, there's a first for everything, right? Now for the detailed recap. We started the second half of the season the same way we started the first half, with a loss. Totaling 31 shots just wasn't enough for us on the day, having a majority blocked or off target. We only had 8 shots on target, that's only 25.8% of total shots on target, and 6.45 total shots. We had big chances, as we only had 2 of those due to inaccuracy. We need to work the keeper more, as that's just not good enough, and is going to win you very little games of football. Appenda had some great chances, and so did Simakin. That cross on the 29 minute mark from David Raum was beautifully weighted over the defenders, but went completely wide and out for a goal kick. Xavi tried all game to produce something out of nothing. There's no fault on his performance whatsoever. And there was absolutely no point in putting on Elmas in the 88th minute mark, as I can't grade him as a player of two minutes of football and three passes. What was Marco Rosa thinking? He may as well have just stayed on the bench. I suppose he was just trying to make us all excited at the end of the game, as we didn't have much to be excited about. Glashwich didn't even need to provide a save, and there wasn't much he could do to stop that goal, as his weight and momentum is going one way as the ball falls to the Frankfurt attacker. Raum and Hendricks out wide played well. I liked what I saw in the core midfield in Schlager, Campbell and Baumgartner. There wasn't anyone I really felt who played a completely disastrous game. A few could have done a bit better, but that's football. Not everyone can be playing at top form all the time, especially after the winter break. I thought it was interesting to have Simikin on the left centre back, as he's normally on the right. I suppose Klosterman isn't as versatile and had to play that role because of it. And I think Baumgartner played well enough to stay on the pitch. I thought we could have reshaped our 4 4 2 to the usual 4 2 2 2 and keep him on in Schlager's position in midfield next to Campbell and play Olmo in that position with Xavi on the other side. So essentially, after the changes, we would have had Appenda and Powson up front, Xavi on the left, Olmo on the right as advanced attacking midfielders, and in the core of midfield, we would have had Kevin Campbell alongside Baumgartner who can play that central midfield role and box-to-box. Quick injury update. Willie Orban continues to work towards his comeback with individual training. And although he's available for selection, I don't think we'll be seeing much of him until the end of the month or maybe the start of February. On to the preview of the Leverkusen game. Leverkusen are coming off a 1-0 win against Arnsberg, which wasn't convincing. So if we get our act together, we can have a chance at beating the league leaders and being the only team to do so this season which I think we need as a club, as we lack a little bit of confidence occasionally. Some interesting match facts leading into this game are averaging per game. We have scored seven goals in the last five matches. We are ranked third in goals conceded per match with an average of 1.1 goals conceded per game. Leverkusen are ranked first away from home this season. They're also ranked second in goals scored per match, with an average of 2.8 goals per game. And Jonas Hoffman is ranked third in big chances created in the competition with 12. He had four chances in total in their previous match. So he'll be a player to watch out for. What I'd like to see in this match is protect the counter. We need to make sure we don't lose the ball in dangerous positions, as Leverkusen have a lot of pacey players who will hurt you on the counter attack. This extends to long through balls over the top or along the ground, as that's where we're really exposed in the Frankfurt game. We do this, we'll go a long way to redeeming ourselves for that round one loss. I don't want us to see get scored against early, as those issues at the back are still persistent. And if we go behind against Leverkusen in the first 10 minutes, it's going to be an uphill battle and almost impossible to come back from.
The only way we'll be coming back from is if we put all our minds to it and use the home crowd to our advantage. Predictions for this match. With Victor Boniface out with a groin injury until early April, they're severely weakened up front without the top goal scorer. That still doesn't mean we can take Leverkusen lightly, as all three goal scorers in the reverse fixture are fit and firing, with Dramon Frimprong, Jonathan Tarr, and Florian Ritz all able to cause us issues. I predict another tough assignment, with the draw being the end result of 2-2. As always, I'd like to thank the backers and supporters of the show, and thank you for listening to this podcast. If you could take a moment to rate us where you listen to this podcast, write a quick review or tell a friend about the show, it really helps us find new listeners and grow the show. So until next time, I've been Justin Crozer. Bye-bye for now.